So we're going to get the class started. Um, quick question, how many people are using the app for the class? All of your handout material is on that app. So make sure you guys get into that. How many people downloaded the class data? So we killed the forest. <laughs> um, so my name is Mark Davis, and the class is Back to Basics. I'm a mechanical engineer, designer, and I'm a site called YourCAD.Guru. I'm also part of the Expert Lead Program. So I'm on the forums answering your questions and doing things like that. So how many people are familiar with the Expert Lead Program? So there's quite a few of us in here. <laughs> They're all in the back and that. So we're the ones that are out there answering these types of questions. And that led me to this class. I took a bunch of the questions that are commonly asked on the forum for the last year and said, let's just do it in a class because people apparently aren't seeing it. So with that, wrong way. Basically, it's a reintroduction to Inventor for people who aren't longtime users or are longtime users and just don't know where to look for certain commands and how to set up the application options and things like that. So hopefully at the end of this class, you'll get a better understanding of the application options, an overview of all the templates, the style management, the I properties, and then we'll get into a little bit of the AnyCAD, the iLogic, 3D PDFs, and screencast, and then where to go for help because there's a vast network out there of just information that you guys can use to make it easier. Instead of spending 30, 40 minutes trying to figure it out, a quick little look on a couple places. I gotta get used to the other buttons. So, we're gonna start at the very beginning when you download it, because it's one of the biggest issues. The virtual agent. It gets you all your files. So I would start there. That's just my personal belief on that. And if you go into the handout, all of these links are active. So you can download a PDF and it'll click and take you right to the page on Autodesk site. So here you can see, how many people use the virtual agent to download? How many use the browser? <laughs> so we'll go to the next step, we'll go into the home page. How many people use the home page? So within the home page, though, is everything you need before you get into an inventor, though. And I think people are not utilizing this great tool. So I think I only saw, what, a couple hands said they used the home page? How many people always go in and go to file, open, and go searching for everything? Very few. So are you guys familiar with the home page? All right. We'll go into a little bit of detail then. So you all know how to go into the advanced section, set up your templates, get the advanced stuff, versus just picking the regular front ones. So within here, you have an option on the side that says advanced. If you slide that over, or click on it, it will take you to all your templates that you would see if you did a normal starting of file new. So it's all right here again, right in the front. Much easier. This came out originally in 2015 in a light version and then really got upgraded in 2016 and 17. I use this personally every day. I find this to be the easiest way for me to get my files going. From that section, you can go over to the next and you have your projects, your shortcuts, and your file details. You can change your IP or IPN project file right here without even getting started. That's a lot easier than always having to go in, double click, all that. Just click it right here. The next stage you have is your shortcuts. Again, you don't have to go in through the Explorer and everything else, it's right here for you. And then file detail, gives you the generic basic data about it. You can see what version if you scroll down and things like that. And then recent documents. This is where you can set up all your searches, old, new, file types, assemblies, drawings. You can start pinning your drawings for it. So, in the recent document, you have a couple different ways you can view it. You can look at it as a large model with just the name, your typical explorer view, and more data and detail underneath. Can't even see that side, sorry. This is also where you can set up all your pinning. How many people pin files? If you're working on a big project, how many people don't know what pinning a file is? So let's say you're working on an assembly 
and you're working on five subassemblies or some parts like that. You can pin the file to your recent documents. So they're always there. It's kind of almost like when you go file open and you see them on the side and pin it. You can pin them here so you don't, again, have to go all the way into the software. It's much easier. So if I'm working on these five details I always know I'm going to be working on for the next two weeks, I'll pin them. Makes it nice and simple. Oops. Let's get back to where we were. So any questions on the home page stuff? Application options. So everybody knows how to get to the application options? They've changed it in 2017. So it's just slightly a little bit different. They got rid of the big I, and now it's under Get Started. And then 2016, you have the other way to go from the right on the front page there. Now, this is the basic application options. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on every single one, but this is how the handout looks for those that haven't downloaded it yet. So you have all your options to see what it is, and that's the link I was saying that takes you right to the AKN page. Again, tons of information you can find for every single item on there. So we're just going to go through some of the most common ones that are asking questions on the forums, like your general. So here you can set up your name, your default text and fonts, and size. Next, how many people know the little tooltip that always pops up? You can turn that on, off, you can adjust it from here with just a little bit of settings. And then the home page. If you don't like the home page, you can turn it off here, or you can set how many file types you see, or I mean, how many files you see. It could be five, 50, 1,000. It's really up to you, um, but you can go from there. The next option you have on the same front is import and export. How many people save their application options? How many people know you can export and import your application options? So within that, if you're going to spend all the time setting up what you use for your basic inventor, you, do, you can take it each year and roll it around. Or if you're a CAD manager, you can share it with everybody and just change your names. It's much easier so that it keeps everybody on the same playing field. And as I said, we'll get into more and more of them as we go. And if you see any you have a question on that I haven't talked about, just ask me and we'll go from there. But again, these are just the most common ones on the forum. But if you have a particular question, we'll answer it. So the next one we're going to go into is the save page. Everybody gets that little reminder. You can turn it on or off, or you can reset the time that you use. It's just set at defaulting at 30 minutes. The next thing we're going to go into is under file type. How many people understand where their files are stored and how they do it, and things like that? So half hands. All right, so from here, you can configure your templates right from here. They've made it a little bit easier in the newer versions than the past. Where you save all your stuff. How many people know what design data is? Design data is all of your standards, pretty much, for your dimension styles and things like that, your XMLs that are saved. Very important that you have that and that everybody has the same path. That's a common issue I find with um, CAD managing is they'll put it up on the network, but not everybody's path to it. So somebody can dimension three place, but this person can't do this style, and they don't have everything exactly matching. From there, you have sketch symbols. How many people use sketch symbols? How many people don't know about sketch symbols? All right. So sketch symbols, we'll get more into that, but this is how you're going to set it up. And in 2016, they started the library folders. Yeah. So you can start structuring your libraries of different types for different projects, electrical, mechanical, things like that, piping. Um, but again, we'll get more into that. But this is just how you store it. Again, using the import and export, you can keep everybody on the same page. I have seen people VBA, VBA at it. So when you start your inventor, it automatically repats all this. A little beyond my realm of coding, but you can automate a lot of this. The next one is your colors. How many people adjust their colors and know you can adjust all your backgrounds and things like that? This is all where it is. So you have all your different choices that you can pick from. I personally use presentation. That's just me, single color. And everybody knows about the chrome and the guy on the motorcycle? I think it was a tree and something, a parking lot before that. This is where you set your chrome and your reflection, as well as your icons. 
Highlight preview, everybody knows about that when you're highlighting and picking. Next, we're gonna get into the display. Out of the box, how many people change their application options or do much with them? Wow, I thought it'd be a lot more. Within that, you have your settings. So everybody, when you come out, you get that shaded model view and everybody wants shaded edge. One day we'll get that just defaulted. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you looking at me? I looked at Dan. I looked at Dan. Somebody pointed to you. So these guys are part of the inventor group. That how would you say? I don't know. I won't even get you guys thrown under the bus yet. Um, so right here is how you set it. But there's two options that get a lot of people. Somebody had. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't see. What? Thank you, I got water. <laughs> so back to this one, you have your file options. The biggest issue is, but I changed it. You have to set the application option or it'll only be for the document. That's the biggest issue I always get. But I changed it to shaded edge. And next time I open the file, it's gone. No, you have to change it right there. Now, within that brings up this box. And this is where you get to pick all of your settings and your projection. Pretty simple, easy. And now they've also added in this year transparency. So that's really nice, something to play with and look at. There's more of that in the book for information. Again, I can't go into all the detail. It will be here for four hours. And that's a reseller's job. <laughs> oh, from also from this page is how you set up your cube or your icons. I don't know how it disappears, but this is one of the common things. My UCS disappeared. This is how you turn it back on, or your origin indicator now. Can't call it that, bless you. ViewCube, how to set up all of your ViewCube settings. Again, more detail in the book on that. I could be there for another 10 minutes on this part. We'll move on to hardware. When we're on the forum and you always have, um, people are having graphic issues, one of the first things we tell you to do is, what's your hardware setting? This is where you do it. But at the same time, they'll say, run a report. This is how you can diagnose your card issues. Very helpful tool. And usually Autodesk or them will ask for that log file. It's a log file, isn't it? I can't remember what the extension was. But it's pretty easy to read, and it'll tell you your drivers if you're up to date. So we'll ask for it a lot on the forums, too. So you can see if you're up to date or not on everything here. Command prompts whole bunch of there. So that's in the book more. I could be here for a day, but this is telling you when you have an interference, constraint issues, and all those different things. So there's a link in the page to go to that and read about. Next, we go into drawings. Not default is retrieve all. So how many people retrieve all dimensions? I think a lot of people have stopped using that. But that's how you can turn it back on and some of your other settings. View justification. I don't know how that gets changed, but every once in a while it does. So when you lay out a view in 2D, it shifts to the right a little or left. It's not centered. This is your issue within and how to reset it. So we'll ask you about that commonly. My view just doesn't look right. This will help you. Front page and your default. I'm going to put this again in the idea station. How to get that set up to be an IDW instead of DWG. It defaults to an AutoCAD drawing. I change it right away to the inventor file. But it also lets you pick, though, all of your years, so if you're saving for an older person, or an older version person, sorry. <laughs> or an old person. How many people use the notebook? Not many. What's that? It's a little complicated. I mean, I could go into a whole bot a lot again, but this is how to set up your colors. You can see the little tab that it makes for it in the engineering notes. Um, I've actually taken this now to 3D PDF for me. I put a lot of my stuff into that now. I had a question on the, on the uh, default 
This one? Yep. Okay. So, is there an advantage to having that set as IDW versus BWG? I prefer using the, the inventor and inventor. That's just me. So this is what you'll also see, and then you'll see this in the future slide. This is how you set on your home page and your default, where it always says AutoCAD, DWG. It'll show you, I'll show you in a little bit that it changes to IDW. I personally like IDWs. I don't know why you would use a DWG and inventor when you can save as it. But that's just my personal belief. I mean, I mean normally I use, I guess I use DWG just for the simple reason I, I teach inventor classes and I have you know, a customer who wants to send a file to a, a vendor or something and I, I just give the example that a lot of times they may not have inventor but they have AutoCAD because AutoCAD is, everybody knows what that is. So if it's already defaulted to DWG, then they can send it off right away versus, I mean, like you said, you can do save as well. I have a. I do iLogic with it, so I just have a save out for a customer. But typically in the manufacturing where I've been, we use PDFs more because we can lock it, and they can't edit it or change it. It's just controlled a little bit better for me. But that's just again my personal belief. But I can understand where you're shipping it out. A lot of my vendors actually prefer uh, DWFs, so they can make the part and put it into the machine. So it's. In the iLogic, when I get to that, I talk about some things. I have code where it can, I can send it to a DW or DWF, DXF, all the different formats that way, depending upon who my vendor is. So the sketch, did I get everything on that? Yeah. So the sketch side, you have your constraint control right here for how to do relaxed and everything else. This is how you control all of that. A lot more, again, on the page. I can spend 20, 30 minutes just on that, but I would look at the link on the handout for this. Next, you have the auto project. How many people use the auto project or turn it off right away? A lot of people turning it off to look at Sketch. I use Origin Point myself um, and the curve. Now, the next stage you have, I think I did it in this one. No. In, this is the older one, 2017 R3, you now have look at in assembly. That was just added. So how many people got R3 now? So if you turn it off, you, in the part, you're going to turn it off in the assembly. So we'll be pointing that out in a little bit as well. Part file. How many people know how to set up their UCSs that come on right away? This is where you'll do it. This is how you can pick no plane or you automatically default. Again, this is where application options are very helpful. You can set up a plane here for everybody so all your parts are constantly on the same plane. I can't count how many times I get one guy who draws it on this one, next one up, backwards, and it's this is what helps you by sharing and using your application options. It's probably one of the biggest things that I just see people pull it out of the box, put it in the computer, well, no longer a box, but they download it and just, they run with it. I think a lot of people would find quicker quickness to it if they had everybody set up the same and utilize the tools that are really here that I don't think anybody really knows about. From there, we're gonna go to the sketch. Ah, I did bring it in. So this shows you now how they did the new in the 17. I was able to squeeze that in right before. It's not in the handout. Handout was due before the power slide. So the last thing is we're going to come into the eye features. Who uses eye features? Still, again, only a few. Who knows what an eye feature is? So any sheet metal people? For punches and things like this, this is where a lot of your stuff could be stored or your standard um, different types of holes. So you can make an IDW for a hole and different things like that. So if you're using a common pattern, you can just bring it in every single time. Or an extrusion, a bossing, louvers are big common. Um, there's a guy who has a website, very, very old, cbliss.com. I think anybody know about cbliss.com? I would write that one down. C B L I S S dot com. 
Charlie Blissey. You have to get past his cats first, pictures in the front. <laughs> this page has been around, God, since early 2000s. He has everything. Everything you can kind of imagine, gears, bearings, IDWs, punches, louvers, anything computer related. Um, iMic is on there. Um, power transmissions, the gear chain I use still to this day from that old Excel spreadsheet. Check out Seabliss. That'll get you your IDWs and sheet metal punches and things like that. Great site, underutilized tool. Um, I think there's something being talked about. Wasn't there something in R3 for IDWs? IDs, or IDs I mean. Somewhere there something was done recently with an upgrade. Did it last year? 27.5. Was it? That's it. Yeah. So. Next, we'll jump over to the assembly page. This is where you can set up your defer updates. Now, one of the biggest ones I've seen of a problem on the forum, who uses Content Center? Certain features in Content Center you couldn't slice or section unless that was clicked. By default, that is not clicked. So people are like, oh my god, it's not working. My slice won't go through the part. This is what you have to click to save it or make it work. Second option, place and ground first component at origin. Very useful tool. You bring in your first one in, grounds, it does everything for you. How many people use that, or do you go in and just drop a part in and constrain it to the UCSs or the planes? Grounded origin. So much easier to use and so much better. I like the planes. This gets you started the right way, in my opinion. Because if you aren't grounded and you undo something, you can corrupt your constraints very quickly. Always ground at least one thing. I can't count how many times I've helped on assemblies. It keeps moving. Is anything grounded? What's grounded? Does everybody know what grounded is? Hands really quick so I can see that we all know what grounded is. All right. I just want to make sure. You can look at the bottom, I don't know, I'd have to turn Inventor on, but I, at the bottom there is a degree of freedom button, and it'll tell you everything that's still loose. It shows those red, red indicators. Red and blue indicators for all the different pointing directions. How many people use the express mode or know what the express mode is? Who knows what express mode is? All right, let's say you have a large assembly and it takes 15 minutes to open normal. Or you have a sales guy who's constantly going in and needs to show the model off. Use express mode. If you have to do any changes to the model, and I believe it defaults on when you install, express mode is on. I turn it off. If you have to do any work in that assembly, turn it off because you're going to have to load it full after the fact. But it's great if you just need to open a big model to share with sales and the boss and things like that and not get too entailed with it. Let's see where we at on. Looking at time. So the next one, oh, wrong boy. From there, we're going to go over to the content center. This is how you set up your content center. Again, I saw only a few people use it. If you, who uses Vault? This is where you'll set up then your Vault server content center if you want to do it on the network. Any questions on application option at all? Lock what? I don't think you can lock it. But again, use your application options. I mean, it's some of the best tools for you right there for your settings. I mean, I can't say it enough. If you're a CAD manager or oversee it, 
make sure everybody's on the same page by doing the application options. If you have to do a reset utility, the application options, you want to save it beforehand because it wipes it. So again, this is why I always save it. I think I've used one for three years straight for it. Templates. How many people use just the standard templates out of the box and don't get into customizing? Awesome, most people are customizing. This is where you'll set up your templates. Again, if you're using a network, make sure everybody is on the same page. Application options again. You can set everybody up on a network to use the same exact location, same templates, everything. This is where I was saying you can show the difference on the front page for the DWG and the IP, IDW. Next, we'll go into the project folders, and this will tell you again how to set up all of that. How many people have a lot of custom templates? Wow, not that many. I have tons. But I'll go into those more later, because I use parameters in them all and I properties. So it makes everything much quicker. If you're going to constantly change something to aluminum, steel, have this shape, that shape, one of the best ways to go is have that already redone. You can have a table driven for a pipe. I have every pipe size in there so I can just pick and click. And my guys are two, ten minute, two minutes, ten minutes faster each job. All I did was make a template though. Hard work in the beginning pays off in the long run. You have a channel. I have concrete blanks for my floors because I got tired of making a floor every single time. Two, pipe, flat stock. English, German, I do German as well, so we have German ones. I have all my different materials. Again, anything that can save you a minute or two a drawing in the long run will save you 10 to 20 minutes on a job and everybody's consistent. That's the biggest issue. Keeping the consistency of the dimension styles and all that through the templates. Next, standard just IPT file. How many people use the multi-body now inside of the IPTs, or know that you can do a multi-body. How many people know what a multi-body is? How many people want to know more about a multi-body? <laughs> so let's just say you have a part, and it has, how do I put it, like a sheet metal box. And you're starting with the box, and you have a lid and all these things. You can build it all in one and save it as a multi-body part. When you're doing the extrusion, and I didn't save it in here because I didn't think anybody would ask about it, um, but it is listed in the book, you have the option, as you're creating it, there's a second icon that says new solid. You can separate those out later into individual IPTs, so you can build up your one IPT with a dozen parts and make it into an assembly later, so everything matches. So you're modeling all in one IPT that can be later a dozen different IPTs. Does that make sense? Next, sheet metal. How many people are using the sheet metal? How many people are setting up the sheet metal templates and the gauges and all that? How many people know about it? So within this, I'll go into a little bit of detail. You can set up your template sizes, 10 gauge, 16 gauge, three millimeter, six millimeter, five millimeter. It's already there for you. You can set up all your bend factors, your unfold factors. Again, saving you time doing it so that each time your guy is doing it the exact same, it's in the template versus, oh, I'm going to go this way with this factor and this one's doing this factor and you're not getting the same results when the parts come in. Utilizing this all together makes everything uniform and everybody work as a team. I keep re-pushing that over and over. The templates and application options are really the roots of a tree to an inventor. If you don't have them, Everything else is just going to be sturdy and it'll die or fall over. This is what corrects a lot of your errors, errors and commonality issues. From there, you have your basic assembly file. How, how many people use the assembly file? I figured everybody would, but there are some who don't. I've actually seen it. Um, from here, you put everything together. You can strand it, model it. Still got my little note in it. Pretty much basic. Now, how many people do the convert to weldment and use the weldment feature? 
people know about the weldment feature and what it is? It's getting better. It's getting more utilized. Um, it's changed location now where to set it up. It used to be right in the front. You could just click on it. Now it's under environments. Or you can use your own weldment from the start. You pick your box. You pick your style. You pick your material. You can change this later. I don't know how many people don't realize, oh my god, I got an aluminum, my model shot. You can change this later. Very simple. From here, I'm going to go into a little bit about a weldment and how it works in the different stages within the weldment. Because I don't think a lot of people really utilize it. They just throw two parts together and say, it's a weldment. And they throw on the weld beads. So from here, what I did is I put a preparation in. If you look at this model, it does not have the chamfered ends in it. I went in, threw the prepper. Oops. Dang, wrong way. Through the preparation, you're able to add features to that and do your machining like a guy would on the floor. So you can make it in almost real time to them. From there, you can add your weld bead. This is how you do it. How many people use the weld bead? How many people are taking the uh, inventor certification test? You better know this. It's in the test. They're getting much better, and I'm not downplaying weldments. I use it. You can put your weld notes in, built into this right here. All of this continues through to the drawing. So it's a very useful tool if you want to set up your guys for doing it and showing it. A lot of people have symbols, and they just draw the triangle or point, like the old AutoCAD days, to it. But you can put your nice symbols in right here. Afterwards, in a true machining world, you would come back after the weld and finish surfaces. You can do that under the machining feature. Again, gives you the options of what to do. This is the proper way if you want to follow the guidelines of manufacturing. I don't think a lot of people actually do the machining this way. Does anybody really use the machine feature in this? Oh, we actually could a decent amount. All right, from there, we're going to go into IPN files. This is 2017. In the handout, I have it linked for 2016 and 17 for you guys. So you can check it. How many people are on 17? Not as many. So I did give you 16 for the options of how to look it up. Within 17, I'm going to go a little bit more into detail of that. You have a couple new features now. You have Storyboard. They've kind of brought Publisher into the new IPN, since Publisher is no longer there. So you would create new storyboards, or you can create new snapshots. That's what I've done here. So you can create multiple different views within the, the snapshots now. Kind of nice. I mean, it's a lot easier in my opinion. It took me a while to get used to it, but I like it. You can set up all your tweaks and scenes right in here. You can do multiple scenes. And now it comes with animation right built into it. So you can back and forth it, watch it as you're working on it to see how everything's working. From there, we'll go into the IDW and the DWG. They're pretty much exactly the same, just one is AutoCAD based. I really don't think there's any real difference to them, except for one's just AutoCAD. Is that about true? There's an AutoCAD blocks folder for DWG files. There's a, I'm sorry, I didn't. Uh, AutoCAD blocks folder in your drawing resources, where there isn't an IDW. Okay. You hit the arrow next to the line, you can hit the arrow next to drawing resources. In IDW, there's an AutoCAD blocks folder, you can still insert blocks, but in a different manner. Okay. I don't use it, so this is kind of one of my weaknesses. I don't use the IDW, or I mean the DWG. I'm sorry? Yeah, always DWGs are larger when you save them out and things like that. Oh, there you go. Yes? Yes. Automatic tweak was removed. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> I mean, there, I heard there, it's back on the idea station to get it back. What happened is I believe they went out and asked a lot of the IPN users, do you use automatic explode and tweak? And the answer was no. They manually do it. So they took that feature out, which made other options, I believe, easier to use by doing it. It doesn't. I don't think it's 
think it also plays well with the storyboard right away. So, yeah, and use the ideas for them. If that's if you'd like to see that. Do you guys know what the ideas for them is? If you'd like to see something in a software, there's a form out there called ideas. And you can put it in there. For example, I have, I have a microphone if you need it. Um, there, I have a couple ideas out there. I think I have like 13. One of them is um, balloon check. I wrote an iLogic code that'll tell me what's not ballooned anymore. Instead of having to double click on the bill of material or on the parts list, look and see the plus marks, I get a little pop-up box floater that tells me what's not done yet. And that is on my website, the code. So if you grab a card at the end, you can see all these extra ideas and iLogics I've put in to my system. Anything else on the IPN? Sorry. <laughs> what time is it, Chris? Eight thirty-nine. Wow, I'm way ahead. So now we're going to talk about a little bit about environments. I don't go into every detail of it, but I will give a couple examples in here. You have your stress analysis, Inventor Studio. How many people use Studio? It's gotten a lot better. I like it. I use it a lot for publications and for the marketing for where I've worked. You have your Create a Mold, Rivet, BIM Exchange. Convert to Sheet Metal is now in your part version. This is your assembly version. So there are differences between part, assembly, and IDW. I think a lot of people miss it. So this is where you do your convert. How many people do 3D printing? So a lot of people are familiar with using this. Do you guys go through here? No. no. That's it? You want any questions on that one? Any questions on that, Dan? If they're not using it? OK. I just saw your look like, huh. Slicer. Put a slicer in. Again, idea station, guys. Post examples, pictures, even if it's from another software. Show them what you want. They will do it. There's well, they will look at it. There's an idea station or an idea forum for almost every product. You go into the Autodesk forums, find your product. Probably one of them is running an idea forum under that product. They really look at these ideas. Go in and hold on the ones that you like. And the ones that get the higher they get. If you look at the what's new in a lot of these, they show a video of all that. But just so you guys know, in the back of the book is a link to all the forums, Inventor, International, American, and it tells you where the idea stations and all that. So I've given you a lot of extra stuff in the book that I'm not showing today. Just so. A quick thought, Dan and I have a rather substantial team. All we, almost everything we do comes off of idea stations. Pretty much a lot of last year's to this year's upgrades, because I said, and they gave kudos to the persons who recommended it. So they do show the names of that. So if you watch those what's new, you'll see the idea station flowing in the background of that whole video, and they do pay attention to you. They do listen. You have to give them the tools that you want. Tell them what you want. I don't want to get you guys beat up too much. <laughs> I didn't go again into all the detail of dynamics, st simulation, stress, and all that. How many people are using tube and pipe and cable and harness? I know Chris is. Wiring and harnessing has come a long way, and they've really done some great update, great, uh, updates in 17, in my opinion. You now have a lot of better workflows or work points in the 3D sketch. So if you get a chance to play with it or even look at the tutorials, it's a really neat thing if you've got any airlines to see if they're going to interfere or get in the way. Again, you have a convert to weldment on this page and another 3D print and your other add-ins. From there, I'm going to just do a quick little update to talk about Studio. One of the biggest questions we get, I rendered it and it still looks bad. Render by reiteration is defaulted to 32 from the very beginning. 137. I turn it off until satisfied. I use high. But that's directly from there to there. If it was 32, I'd have a little bit of spotting in here and things like that. So make sure you just, if you want to use it, do this. 
you can get almost perfect, in my opinion, realistic models made by this. Unfortunately, I left my job and the best model I had, I can't use it because <laughs> confidentiality thing and all it was was a beautiful little scale. <laughs> Next, tube and pipe. If you look, I mean, a bare model can look exactly like that and real and nice. This is a class that's coming today at 1 o'clock, if you can get into it. Two gentlemen in the back, Mark and Chris, are teaching it. This is what they do. This is courtesy of his co company he works at. This is what they do all day. Tube and pipe has come a long way. I think there was a huge upgrade last year or the year before. <laughs> I'm trying to help Dan. <laughs> I mean, I feel bad. You're just whacking, Dan. <laughs> but it's, it's very nice. I mean, a lot of it's already built in, and the features are there. So if you want to learn more about tube and pipe, I seriously recommend the class at 1 o'clock. Even if you can get off to the side of it and come in late, there is a few openings. They enlarged their class. So it was full. Now they doubled it. It's a very interesting and great class. Next, we're going to talk about the different types of views. How many people use the different types of views? Do you typically just leave it at the view represents default? Do you guys get into positional? Anybody? <clears throat> I really have seen a great update in the last few years on the positional stuff, and we'll go into that more. We'll get into each of the types. Some of the advantages, I put this in the book as well. I'm not going to read them all. But there's a lot of advantages of using your view reps for certain things. If you have a large, let's just use a car as an example, and you just want to look at the motor, you can set up a view rep right there for just the motor to use in your car. You're not going into your IDW, turn off, turn off, turn off, turn off, turn off, turn off. Set it up beforehand again with the view rep. Colors, if you want different things to look different, you can set colors in the view that won't show up in the master default view rep. So if you have to do certain things, these are the areas to do it. Yes? Is it best to set that up at the uh, one sub-assembly level or at the large assembly level? Well, it depends because you can have sub-assemblies and assemblies. And you can then set to see certain things in the main assembly through the smaller assembly, through the sub-assembly. So like say you have, again, the car. You could set it up to turn off the motor and certain parts of the motor in the view rep in the sub-assembly in the master's and secondary assembly. So it's really just setting it up. Go ahead. Can you do what? Well, these are view reps, different. Yeah, but can you do that with view reps as well? Rename them? Well, no, if you name them the same, have them like auto-rename the view reps, they have them auto-rename them. No. Idea, Idea station. <laughs> You're going to hear that a lot from me. Go ahead. There's still no way to do uh, the part level in like you wrap like step through, like you can totally want the first set of features you created and the next set of mouse on it. It's not our longer term vision. You're basically talking about part configuration. Or you can, you can use part configuration to do stages of machining and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. We're doing some of the framework as we speak, it's just not ready to fit for these. Again, here's a quick example. Turning off all the unnecessary components when you're doing it. It's so much nicer when you're creating views that you just can click on and say engine only, car, lights, wear parts. That's something I do and I started doing recently is I made a folder for fasteners so I could do a fastener count. Wear parts. So my customers, I can click on that and know exactly what all my wear items are much easier. You're li you're, you have no limit on what your view reps could be used for, in my opinion. And I think they could be utilized a lot more. Here's an example of it. So I have just my standard full assembly, all my wear parts, and my fasteners. Much easier to see what you have. And it's just a click of a button. When you're placing your views, you, I'll get into how you can see all that. Next, positional. How many people use the positional? You like it? Why? Uh, it's not extremely intuitive for newer users. Um, In what way? I, I, can't, I can't answer that because I'm not the one saying it's hard to, hard to use. I, I've been using them for a while. And, and I, I really think they're fine. Uh, 
may get a little tricky when you have, like we just talked about, having um, a design views of a subassembly within a parent assembly, when you do positional reps of a subassembly within this assembly, within that assembly. And I'm going to get into more of the positional stuff, too. Okay. Um, my opinion, a lot of that comes from, and please don't take it wrong, constraint etiquette. I think a lot of people do constraint picking wrong. That's just my personal belief, but they pick one and two wrong and don't understand how you should be picking it, and you end up getting those negative values that flip you 180 and things like that. So it all starts with constraint etiquette. So here's just a quick example of it in all the different views, very quick, easy. Level of detail. How many people use level of detail? How many people know what level of detail is for? What do you guys use level of detail for? See, I do that with view reps, too. But I think there's a miscommunication a lot on that, and I'm not going to go deep into the level of detail. Go ahead, bud. And that's where people should be using it, is if you have larger assemblies and it's slow to load, there's certain areas that you can use the level of detail to make it easier for you. And we'll get into a little bit of that. Correct. So, for example, in this one, I gave a few examples from the Autodesk site, which links in the book, again, there's a huge, I put a lot of discussion about the level of detail into the book for you to read about and see what's right for you. You can do derived assemblies. Oops. Derived assemblies. You can shrink wrap. You can hide features. I use it if I have to for my part count and everything else. So right here, you can see I have 39 parts, 17, 17, everything's on. If you use a level of detail, it suppresses it. Your part count goes down. It's like it's not there. It may, it's still there, it makes your system run faster, it just turns it off a little bit. So it's really, for me, more of speed and making my computer work and making it for the larger assemblies just, I'm trying to figure out how to word it properly, go faster. I mean, it just, it helps with the larger assemblies. But I, again, don't use a lot of it, and I put more in the book for you guys to read on. Oop. Hold on. I think I missed one. I'm sorry? In here? I can't hear. Where can you use the, the auto link for view representations? Auto links. There, there isn't an auto link for view reps. There's an auto link. What Dan was talking about next to is an auto link for LEDs. Yes. If you have all gears off in each of your sub assemblies, you can link them automatically together. So when at the top level you say switch to all gears off, all the gears go off all the way down. We don't have that for view reps. Positional. All right, I could go through that level of detail. Any other questions on templates? Again, this is why setting up template defaults and things like that all help you a little bit more. But we're going to go deeper into templates with part two. How many people use the style manager? How many people don't know what the style manager is? You know that box that pops up when you open a drawing and says, conflicting and it gives you a list of all the, the little issues. This is your style manager where you set it all up. So within that, you get a default for all your standards. Then here's your typical dimensioning styles. Just like your application options, you can import and export it out. I think that's in my next slide, but I thought you were waving. You can now, when you do your styles, you can make a new style, rename, replace, purge. If you do a new style based on one here, it will copy that dimension style and you can edit it and rename it to what you need. If you want a brand new, up here. This is where you can control 
besides all your dimensions, your leaders, your layer box, your whole tables, parts list, revision, this is where everything is for you to utilize. It's very important you understand how, in my opinion, the manager works. Chris. Do you mention the object default? No. And within, again, the book gives you all the links how to set up and do a whole thing with tutorials and things like that. So it, a lot of that is in the book. I mean, we could spend hours on that as well. Um, but as he said, you can set up all the new and you assign it. Good point. I forgot about that one. Because that is a common error. I made a dimension. Now what? <coughs> Import, export again. If you have somebody who needs millimeters and inches, split dimension. You can, if you have it on your machine, you can export it out and import it into somebody else. But again, if you set up your templates and you put all your dimension styles, everybody's matching. Much easier, but very simple. You can share. If a customer has a certain one they want, have them export it out and give it to you. It'll be an XML. I'm sorry? Yes. Everything in the handout, I have hyperlinks to the uh, Autodesk network. Knowledge Network. So if you just put the uh, PDF on your system, besides the printout, if you click on this, it will take you to Autodesk site for everything. I mean, every single page I've linked into this. <laughs> Changing sheets. Everybody familiar with how to change your sheet sizes? Sketch symbols. Again, not everybody's used to sketch symbols. How many people are using them again? How many people have standard notes for their company? Standard tables? You can put all of that in your sketch symbols. It's much easier than every time having to go find it, redraw it, redo everything. I have all of these and more. Yeah, like AutoCAD, it's a block. So I mean, I have tons. Sorry, these are all in German. <laughs> Um, but you have your different phosphating, glass finishes, your finish to the micron notes. Everything's there. It, it simplifies so many things. If you have to repeatedly do any note, make it a sketch symbol. Go ahead. Yes. Yes, you can copy and paste all of your sketch symbols from drawing to drawing and things like that. That's why they started making the family. So I believe you can export it out, can't you now in 16? Yes. Your library? I got one saying yes. Okay. Copy paste. You can see what the handout looks like. That's what I keep referring to. You can see what it looks like, what I keep referring to. That can pass around. I just want to back. My wife gave it to me as a gift. So. So I think the question we're asking for is, I have an old drawing. I now have a sketch library. Go find the matching symbols. Replace it with a reference to the library. That's, that's, that's what All right. <laughs> Actually. It's not a trivial problem. Because otherwise, you can end up with two versions of There is an iLogic code on my page. I had a guy give me a way to change English ones to German ones. So there is a way you tell it to be, if you see A, replace it with B. It was very neat. So I have these set up to go from English to German and German to English. 
So one will say phosphate, one will say, well, both will say phosphate. One will say anodize and one will say this. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not that fluent in German. I can read it much better. So like, for example, I have all my revision balls, they had their set up this way so I could just insert them much easier. Where is the one? I don't have it in this. You can, I'm trying to think what else. So I have tables, I had prompted tables. So if I had, I used to do wastewater and I had flocculators and things like that, I need to have a thing that would tell me how many paddles, um, the RPMs and the motor size. So it would, when I brought it in, it would t ask me what those items were. Just like if you had a t prompted title block for a drawing. I mean, very useful tool. If you're doing anything more than twice, use a sketch symbol in my opinion. Any other questions on the templates? Creating and changing views and custom views. 2016, they changed the way views were done. You used to have that ISO view, right view, left view, top view box. Everybody know about that one? Are you still using that? Who's on anything prior to 16? Not that many. That's good. That's good. So you've all seen the new changes to how it works. Within that now, you can create, if you don't use the ball, everybody familiar with how to use this now? Much easier in my opinion. But if you have to do anything, you can use the custom view right here. You can, you'll come in just like the old way. Now, one thing I had is, somebody asked me is, why can't I do a view rep? You're not working on a view rep here. You're not gonna be able to change anything in your browser. Had a hard time explaining that one. Pick your face, pick how you want it to look here, click finish drawing. Next, I'll get into the base view. Within the base view, you can also set up your position and your level of details now. So you can have your standard base, you can do a second view with it in the down position. Much easier, much nicer in my opinion. Go ahead. He's not smiling. Because in my class, I had to answer the same question. <laughs> it's most likely you'd see an app option very soon if you thought that's the truth. It, we, we, yeah, that's all. Anybody? What's that? It's supposed to be persistent. Yeah, it does persist more in newer and newer revisions, but people want it to either just be on by default from the game. For instance, when we do a new install, it'll probably erase your registry in one second. So everybody understands how to do a positional rep? We're good with that. From here, you can also do your overlay. This has gotten so much better in the last two releases. How many remember, how many people use overlay? How many people were, it created everything on top of it? Do you guys remember that? That's gone away and now you only get the items that change. So you don't have to turn off all those extra hidden lines that were layered over the top. I see one lady in the back, she's deaf. yep. It used to be cumbersome. If you did a positional where if you had a cylinder, you'd have the secondary of the whole cylinder on the back that didn't move, would show up in a hidden line. Now it only shows what's actually moving. And you can do multiple. So you have your base, you're up, you're down. Much easier. Anything else on, any questions on this? I properties and parameters. How many people are familiar with I properties and the parameters? How many people use them? So you have multiple ways to get to your I properties. Um, you can come through the Explorer. Don't recommend it because sometimes if you have a file open, you will get a message that says properties have changed and it's not up to date. Half the time I lose them because you click yes and you're wrong and no and you're wrong and it's just not a, I use it if I'm doing a batch um, release and I'll put the checker's name in 100 files. This is how I can do all 100 in a second. You can use a design assistant as well. I'm just lazy and I find my explorer much quicker. You can also go through with a simple right click. 
iProperties, and also in the menu bar, there's an icon for iProperties. Again, one of the most useful tools to use in the system. I'll start out with the general page. Again, all of these are linked on the book that I gave you guys for a handout. I'll get into more detail on the effects that you can put formulas in so that you can get your stock sizes and things like that through customs. Comments, I had one employer who wanted it in the comments. Don't know why, but I gave it to him. But this was linked then to his bill of materials and his title blocks. Very useful tool. This is the only one, if I can get you guys to go around the idea station, how to get that to populate everything if you pulled in a drawing for a cost. So you can put your cost of a, of a plate, a block, whatever you're machining right into this and get your cost factors through it. I've seen people set up Excel spreadsheets where this is linked as well and it updates automatically for the steel prices and things like that. Custom. How many people use custom I properties? Why? What's that? They can be a little confusing. There's a lot. Again, I'm going to go back to the knowledge network. A lot of things are in the knowledge network. That thing is growing. How many people know what the knowledge network is? All right, good, because I'm going to explain that again in a little bit. Um, I set up all of this, which then populates this. So now I have all my stock sizes because in my template, I set up, in my template, I set this up so that it pulls all of my values in for me, predetermined. Now your guys aren't spending an hour going, oh, what were the dimensions? Writing them down on a scrap piece of paper and then populating it. Automate your stuff. It's just so much easier. And there's knowledge out there. If you get stuck, go on a forum. The inventor forum, there are guys who will answer it and give you the answer in an hour. That's probably a safe assumption, Chris. I mean, there's a lot of us will ask you to provide. I met one person on the forum who's in my class. I started helping her. She lives in Michigan and got her to come to the class and come to AU. So the forum is very helpful. It's a useful tool. We will help you. People will help you. Great tool. Makes it easy. We'll go to the save. This is just where you get your little icon picture. Nothing big. And then properties. How many people know what the properties are and where to find everything? This is where you find your mass and your center of gravity and your volumes. This, I link this a lot to my title blocks, my bill of materials, so that you can get what the weight of something is. I have it set up on one so my whole machine weight, I can get that. So when the guy comes in, hey, how much, is this, how much does this thing weigh? I've got to ship it. I can just calculate it really quick because I have the properties already there. Simple tools. You can automate, yes, you can put it in your notes. You can have it tied to a sketch symbol. So when you pull on your weight, it automatically populates for you. One. What's that? Yeah. So if anybody asks you, how much is it? Weigh. Second option, update. Make sure you update your weight. That's one of the biggest issues I get. My weight's wrong. Did you update it? No. You will have to update it. Again, I have an iLogic code that made it easier for me, so I just update. Parameters. Again, this gets into the formulas where I was saying if you have standard plates, if you have standard parts, you can set up parameters within your dimensions to automate it. If you're going to draw 50 tubings that are always the same, make a template with the parameters. You can get all your sizes, everything put into it. Automate it. Just make it easy. Do anybody have the standard templates tied with the parameters? A lot of people not understand the parameters. I mean, any reason why you wouldn't you want to use them? Because more and more people are commonizing everything they do in trying to lean manufacture. And this is one of the greatest tools for lean manufacturing. You can do a di design intent. You can also link it to an Excel spreadsheet. So let's say you have an assembly and you want this motor, this, 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 and this. This can control it for you. 
you can set up if you know beforehand that this plate needs to be, or you have a table that needs this, and the length of the legs are going to be this. You can set up an, a spreadsheet externally that links to all of this. You just click on that spreadsheet, update it. You have everything done for you. Again, but it's everything done in the beginning. More of it, again, in the book, it links you to the pages about the parameters and the different ways to go with it. But this shows you how easy it is. You find it here. You tell it what you want it to be. You update this. It updates it for you. Pretty simple. Any questions on parameters, I properties? Are you saying that it's just in You can do it in assemblies. You can set up, let's say you have a hole in a part. You have 50 holes and they're on a pattern. You can go back in here, put hole distance, just, or HD, put 50, put 25. If all of a sudden the customer calls up, you know what, I need them on 30, double click, you're done. It's so much easier to use a lot of the parameters. If you have, one of the new features that came out in Inventor was um, where you can take a, a certain uh, feature and with a point you can put it all over the place. You can control your heights of things, I mean, hole patterns, distances, I mean, this is the place to be. It's, you could probably do a whole class just on parameters. And I'm trying to think where's some other options that I've used. We use them on, uh, we have a standard tank that we sell for a lot of our customers, depending on the volume of bleach that we're using, we'll just have a standard tank that we have for a Nine ten. I'm over. No, I'm to nine thirty. I mean, those are the things. If you again, my cards are there. Chris's cards are there. The forum. If you come on the forum or in any of us, we'll help you with it. I. I mean, she knows. I. I mean, we've had many phone calls and emails, and I. And that all started on the forum. What's that? Yeah. I mean, but that's what we do. We do it for free too. Sometimes. Um, <laughs> if I start getting 50, 100 people calling me, yes. I'm trying to think of another great example for table driven. Legs, if you have a fence, say you wanted to do guard railing, great features. With the design generator or frame generator and Excel spreadsheets, controlling all your legs and your distances. I mean, common things that you draw over and over, make it this way. If you have multiple variations of a vase or something, you know, that's your tool to use. Any other questions on? I thought you were... Next, we're going to get into AnyCAD. I love AnyCAD. Anybody know what AnyCAD is? Anybody use it? AnyCAD came out two years ago in, uh, well, 2016 in R3 update, two? 2016? I thought it was in one of the up to try. Let's say I worked in Detroit, so I did automotive. And you have all the different part features. You have CATIA, you have people doing unigraphics and things like that. And you have to share products. Sometimes it's very frustrating to get a step model from them and it comes in horrible. So what they've done is they've made these native one version down. So you can't, they can't be on 17 and you're on 16 of SolidWorks. You won't be able to bring it in, correct? It has to be equal or lower. Yeah. So I don't want anybody coming out of, oh, you said I can bring SolidWorks 17 and 16. No. So you can bring in a SolidWorks assembly, a step file, all the different products that are listed here. But what's nice is you have two options within how to do it. You can do the reference model. So let's say you get a CATIA model and they're still working on it, you're working on it. You leave it in your network as that CATIA model. If they update it, you replace it, it comes into your model, updated. But you use it as the reference model and keep it the same. Does that make sense to everybody? Much easier, in my opinion, by leaving that. The second option is you convert like normal. You can bring in a step, convert a SolidWorks part to an inventor part. Somewhat editable. Not 100%, would you say, Dan? With direct edit, you can edit some features of it, but 
if you get something from, say, McMaster, you can bring it in as their SolidWorks file and leave it or the step. You can leave your step file as step files too. So I'm gonna jump backwards really quick. That feature, if you get a step file, you can leave it as a step file. You don't have to convert it. So it will bring it in and you can utilize it that way. I think that's a really nice thing in, in my opinion. Yes? Mm -hmm. I believe you, yeah, you can bring it in the vault. Yes, you can bring it in the vault, I have done that. Second option is when this comes up, let's say you get a huge model, I'll bring back a car again, and it says it's body, door, hood, all these things. You can pick and choose under the select what you bring in as well. You don't have to bring the whole assembly in. You can bring bits and pieces of it instead. Again, great tool, great update. I think. Any questions on AnyCAD? iLogic. How many people use iLogic? How many people are afraid of iLogic? <laughs> iLogic is coding. It's taking what used to be the VBA add-in kind of in a sense and re -re recognizing it a different way. I utilize it a lot. So what happens is you get a, lot of, you get a browser now that you can pick on and it comes in under the Manage tab. You do have to click it on and engage it down here. It's a little bit changed since, I believe, 2016, or 15 to 16, there was a little change to it. But the box is nice, and it works easier. So you have your general rules, your forms, your global forms, and your external rules. We're going to go into a little bit of detail about the forms and the external rules. So rules are to this document right here, whatever you're in. Forms. Let's say you have that table I was telling you about with parameters. You can tie your parameters to this, extrude it all out and say, pop-up box to make this. And say, I want A to be this, which is your overall length, your B, your C, right here from your forms. So if you have customizable stuff, iLogic is not that hard to use. They, it's a pick and choose that's really kind of easy. It's not as hard as you think it would be. I mean, there's some great tutorials I've listed. But I would look at this. I got this from a gentleman named Curtis. He's on the forums. He loves iLogic. I mean, that's his baby. He will help you any way you can. He's the one who wrote my German to English. I've seen him actually make everything in your browser change to an English name. He wanted Dowels to be German instead of English, a customer did. And he made an iLogic that would switch it in the browser on your IDW, or IPT. So here's just a quick example again of how it all works for the form. Again, now, here's an example. Here's all of mine on mine, my external rules. And that's not even all of them. There's a few more I have that. Turn off work planes, time stamps. Um, I think that was for you, Luna. Structuring. So how many people go into the bomb and have to renumber their bomb all the time? You go on your parts, material list, all that. I got tired of it. So I just made one where my customer, we started everything at 20, 10 was all of our electrical. So every time I had to start a drawing, I'd have to start at 20. Instead of constantly having to click every time, I got an iLogic made to where I can do it in the IDW and in the part. Simple. Double click, renumbers it in reiterations or in uh, 10 places. So it's 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. You can set up all of these type of iLogics very simply. Changing title blocks. I mean, how many people that go through, they gotta delete it, change it? You can automate it. There's code out there all over the place for a lot of these items that you might wanna utilize. Again, phosphate, German title block, replace, turn, uh, sketch two. I mean, I got a lot of playing with ones. Um, changing material. So sometimes you can set up a whole list of materials you wanna use just for, your, for you guys. So say, you know, you get all, what is it, like 150 different materials in that whole pull list. You can set up an iLogic that'll give you maybe 10. So what you'll do is you'll click on it and say pick material. You populate that box. It'll then change your material for you and your part. Much easier sometimes instead of scrolling, 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 still polished. So if you only have 10 or 15 of them, I'd recommend setting up maybe iLogic that way. 
picking things easier. You can also utilize iLogic for DWGs and IPT or IDWs. I have one that closes it out, makes a DEXF and a PDF for me, and I, it tells me I can tell it where to save it, or it's automated in the command. So instead of having to go file, save, print, all three things, it's all in one command. Anybody have any questions on iLogic? Go ahead. Okay, so there's two choices, and I'll go back to the. Oh, I'll go back to this. There it is. So you have external rules that are stored on your drive. That's stored here. Global ones that can be saved for everybody to utilize. You can set them up in your templates. You can right click and say add rule. That can be prevalent or just for that drawing through all of this. Um, rules are. This one is for, it's in the handout. I listed what each of the tabs were. I tried memorizing it again this morning. It is. There we go. So rules is tab list for all stored in this document. Forms, tab list, all forms and buttons, triggers stored in current document. External rules list all the rules stored outside of Inventor, external hard drive on your own. And then global forms list all of the forms and buttons and triggers rules stored outside of Inventor regardless. So one side's network, one side's local. Um, I didn't go into triggers, but that's something else really quick. You can set up iLogic to work on a trigger of a certain command. If you hit save, it automatically will do something for you. If you do a save as, you can set up a trigger where it'll do that code for you. Um, that's a little advanced for me, but again, it's in the book, more that you can read about. I didn't want to give you something that's not true, or I didn't know 100% about. Second question? Um, the the debugger's there. It says you don't work, it don't work. <laughs> It'll turn red. What's that? Had a class yesterday. I had a workaround for I didn't catch that one. He has. There was a class yesterday that had to explain how to get around the debugger. How many people use, I'm going to go to the next one, Screencast. Wow. Anybody know what Screencast is? Screencast, to me, is probably one of the best new tools out there for a company. It's a free video recorder. It records any program that's on your screen. And you have permissions, and, um, contribu uh, permissions for public, shared with, um, things like that. So you can go onto the network, it's free, it's an add-in. I believe it's built into now 17, 16 it was an add-in. Is that correct, Dan? No, you don't need it. It is built in and better, in my opinion. In the recent release, they actually set it up so that you can change the voiceover as you're recording. So on the forums, we use Screencast to help a lot of people all the time. So they'll say, hey, I can't get this to work, this to work. I think <laughs> she's shaking her head because I've sent her many Screencasts as well. Go ahead. Does it save as a local video file on your hard drive? No. Yes and no. I'll get to that part in a sec. So what happens is you have to use your login, okay? Which they've now, just real quick, combined them all. So log on, you can combine all of your different areas of uh, IDs to one general one now. That just happened in the last week. Um, from there, you'll see what you have it set up, all of your contributions, like pending, options. From here, you can set up all the different types, shared, private, things like that. So only in private, only you see it. Shared, you can send a link to somebody, and you guys can collaborate on something or see how something is done. Oh, no. 
It is not public. No, yes it is. You can search in the AutoCast uh, AKN and find other people's screencast and look at their, if they're public. Now, real quick, back to your question. Can you save it? Yes. You can save it down and put it on YouTube or whatever. You can embed it and share it that way. No, you can still get the commands. I thought in the new one. I didn't show the new one because it just came out. They just did a major upgrade to it, so I had to pull it really quick because I didn't have time to update these. You now can also record a full length video and change the sound. You can delete it, edit it, uh, take out sections of it. The one thing I just tell everybody though, take your time. Practice it. I can't count how many times I start one, delete it. Start one, delete it. Start it, delete it. Run through what you want to do and then come back and voice it. Problem was, how much time? Five? I can do it. Um, <laughs> practice what you want. It takes time to upload though, but in the new update, it's a lot faster. So utilize it. So if you want to do something across your company, show a video, show how a part works or strokes and everything with the view representations and all the things, you can do it in a video. You don't have to show the commands though, as Chris was saying, you can turn that off as well. You can turn off voice as well. You can just make a plain video. Go ahead. And this can be used as screen recorder non Autodesk software as well? Yes, I've recorded many music videos and combined my son with it. <laughs> Yes, it has a red box that'll pop up. So I've done things with Adobe and kind of borrowed the recorder. Sorry, Autodesk. <laughs> yes. I'm gonna go quick into 3D PDFs. Who uses them? Really? I love them. Great thing now, their recent update, R3, again, updated it, colors are back in it. It's a great feature to utilize. I've even embedded them into an HMI for our customers so that they can pick on parts when they need to reorder things from their machines. So you can embed them, you can hyperlink into them, and things like that. So this is just a general assembly default one. Within that, it's just simple. This is in 17. You just go in, create 3D PDF, pick what data you want to share. You can share everything that is in your I properties and things like that into it. You can share your view reps into your 3D PDFs. And I'll get more into detail of that. You can turn on and off right here and tell it there's options you can't see that says only use populated items. So it doesn't give you a bunch of blank boxes, only the populated stuff will come through. Pick your vision quality. View it, you can do a step file. You can even add attachments to it for other documentations like a DWG, uh, another PDF, three minutes. From there, you can save it. You have to pick a template you want. You have to pick where you want it to save. This is a typical 3D PDF that you can move around. So for example, here's a full assembly. View ref of just where. Here's an example highlighting, finding it in the bomb and things like that. I have a lot of stuff on my page. I figured out how to unlock the Java. So you can change your part number list lock from nine to whatever you need it to do. So there's a lot of that stuff on my site and in the book. Any questions on any of that really quick? Where to go for help? You keep hearing me say AKN. Again, all the links are in the book, where to go. Great place for knowledge. If you get an error in your AutoCAD or Inventor that crashes 1603, Search it. It's there. I'll guarantee you there's an answer. Well, almost guarantee if it's a new one. Tutorials. Oop. Great place in there. Utilize the tutorials. You can create real quick custom tutorials for your own company for you guys to share on how to do things. That's new in 17. Great upgrade. What do we got? Knowledge base, work features, again, all about that. 
There's what I was saying. You can find how to share and find other people's stuff. Your stuff is shared on there. Forums, great place. Twitter, you need help? Go on Twitter. There's a help page. That's all in the book again, guys. Any other questions? <laughs> Told you I'd make it.